Well, greetings. Welcome to Calf Chat. I'm Noah Litherland. Today we're going to be talking about strategies to feed large volumes of milk to young calves. There are some certain advantages to feeding large amounts of milk, whether it's from whole milk or from milk replacer. Uh, certainly we want to get that calf growing uh, at a fast rate early on, really set that growth curve for that calf. Secondly, we want to take advantage of some highly digestible nutrients that are nature's most perfect food, which is certainly milk. Finally, we want to take advantage of some of the lower cost nutrients as well. If we're utilizing uh, pasteurized waste milk for those calves, a very good source of digestible nutrients to get that calf started growing very well. Let's talk about some of the constraints though. Some of the constraints could be potentially feeding too much milk too fast. We certainly have seen that on farms. We're really trying to take advantage of those high plans of nutrition, but we're just giving calves too much milk and almost kind of flood them out. Some of the challenges can be where if the calf is not taking advantage and digesting those nutrients within the GI tract, those nutrients are still present, then somebody else, such as uh, pathogenic bacteria, may digest those nutrients and cause that calf some, certainly some health challenges. Certainly other seasonal variation can be a problem as well. Whereas we can get by with feeding higher plant of nutrition from milk during very cold weather, where the calf has an increased plant of nutrient demand, but whenever we get warm weather, such as the summer we're coming into, those calves may struggle a little bit more because that high demand for nutrients is not there. And certainly the other and final constraint is the starter grain intake. We want to have good plant of starter grain intake so we can really get that calf's rumen developed and taking off and doing a really good job there. So let's talk about some tips in order to really feed higher volumes of milk very successfully. The first one, no surprise here, high quality colostrum management, not only from a, a volume standpoint, but also from a hygiene standpoint. We think that the colostrum may actually have some factors in it to help prime the intestine in order to absorb nutrients whenever we feed a higher plane of nutrition. That becomes critically important. The second step is doing a step up program. We'd like to feed a high plane of nutrition from milk, but we've got to get calves accustomed to that high plane of nutrition. We like about a 10 to a 14 day step up program where we might feed about six quarts of milk in that first 10 to 14 days and then step it up to as high as even eight to nine quarts uh, for that calf and certainly some are going a little bit higher. We feel very comfortable about that nine quart level and then uh, allowing calves to hit that plant of nutrition and then, and then start the weaning process after that. The third factor that we might consider besides colostrum and a step up program is feeding multiple times a day. Certainly the traditional two times a day program can work well, but we're feeding a higher plant of nutrition Feeding up to three x or even four, eight, four times a day becomes a little bit of a good idea. If we can spread those meals out throughout the day so the calves get less gut fill at one meal interval, that can be highly advantageous. So we can split those meals up into three times a day. We feel like it's really important to read the calf's behavior. When we think about the calf, when they're drinking milk, we want a good rapid rate of milk consumption. So calves that are slow to drink their milk, Calves that don't finish their milk are two really good indicators that we may be overdoing it in terms of the amount of milk that we're feeding those calves. It may be time to back down a little bit as well. Additionally, if we see calves that are really have loose stool that has a white consistency, that can be an indicator that too much milk is being fed to that calf and it's actually flushing its way through the system, presenting some potential challenges for the calf and calf health. We also think about calf intake as a milk intake as a, per, a percent of body weight. So those little bitty calves, the calves that come out less than, less than 80 pounds or so, those are calves we do need to be more patient with, feed them a smaller volume of milk until they can kind of catch up and have enough GI tract in order to manage some of that milk. From a maximum feeding standpoint, we talked about nine quarts. We also think about that as an intake as a percent of body weight. About 2.4 percent of body weight for us is, is kind of our maximum in terms of how much milk we're going to feed. So about 2.4 pounds of milk solids or milk replacer powder, powder is kind of our ceiling. The fifth and final strategy is we need to plan for later weaning. If we're going to feed a lot of milk nutrients, that's great, but we also have to achieve great starter intake as well uh, through the weaning process so those calves don't stall out uh, while we're pulling them away from milk or weaning them. And so we need to have facilities that are designed in order to take care of those calves from a size standpoint and from a bedding standpoint so we can keep those calves comfortable in, in the facilities longer until they're achieving an appropriate amount of starter grain intake 
which is about five to six pounds or so before the weaning process and moving. So with that, I'm Noah Litherland, again discussing topics and trying to uh, feed Greater Plains of Nutrition for milk uh, successfully to our baby calves. Uh, thank you again for tuning in to Calf Chat and have a great day.